Okay, students. Now, in our previous class, <coughs> we have already discussed regarding the prism formula. That's a very important discussion for the prism formula. And we have got this formula. Mu is equal to sine angle A plus delta M by 2 by sine angle A by 2. This is the prism formula. Alright. Where delta M is the delta M here. We have already said it is the angle of minimum. Angle of mini, minimum deviation. Delta M is known as the angle of minimum deviation. Alright. If I if I plot a graph, a very important graph, if I plot a graph for delta versus I, the figure is there. Main figure is in front of you. Main figure is there in front of you. According to this figure. Alright. If you change the value of I for the different values of I, if you find out the different values of delta. Obviously, as I will be changed, delta will also be changed. So, if you change the value of I and corresponding ch changes of delta are noted down, alright, then what we shall get? We shall get the variation will be like this. Initially, as I is increasing, delta is decreasing, it is coming to its minimum value, alright, and then it will increase. If I draw a tangent, a horizontal tangent, here we shall get delta m. It's very clear. We shall get delta m. Alright. This graph is an important graph. Followed? This graph is an important graph. I hope with this here, with this formula, this graph is related. We shall get angle of minimum deviation from the graph. Only we can determine the angle of minimum deviation from there. Now, we are coming to a special case again. That special case is regarding a thin prism. Look, thin prism. What is a thin prism? The thin prism is that prism whose angle is very, very small. Angle of the prism is very, very small. One or two degrees. I tell you, normally in equilateral prism, which we have already discussed in this, the angle of prism is, angle of prism is normal case, it is around 60 degree, nearly 60 degree. But in case of a thin prism, the angle of prism is very, very small, nearly one or two degrees, right? And with that, the values of I, E, R1, R2, etc., these are also very small. Angle A is small, very small, and these angles are also very small. And understood what I have to say? These angles, these angles means we are taking reference to this. These angles are coming from here. If you plot the same rays here, we shall get these corresponding angles. We can take here. You can take the reference of this figure. Fine. In that case, what will happen? Here, if you take the first refraction, I am considering this as the first refraction, first refraction, and this as the here through this surface, it is the second refraction. Followed? Second refraction. First refraction is taking place from here, second refraction is taking place from this surface, another refracting surface. First refraction, first refraction. If I consider according to this figure, considering I and E are very small, so what we can write mu should be sine I by sine R1. Agreed? That means it is only I by R1 here for small, small angles. Similarly, if I take if I take the second refraction, second refraction, let us consider the second refraction, that is from this surface. Obviously, mu should be sine E by 
sin r2 which is equal to i by sorry e by r2 and here also for small angle all right so we have so we have i is equal to sorry i is equal to mu r1 and e is equal to mu r2 very clear you add these i plus e should be mu times r1 plus r2 that is also clear i plus e now you take the reference of equation number 4 and 5 all right from equations 4 and 5 i write here in equation here i write angle a plus delta is equal to mu here into angle a here i write from equations 4 and 5 all right or you can say delta is equal to mu minus 1 into i am not writing angle a only a a means it is representing that angle the meaning should not be changed the symbol i am not every time writing an angle symbol i am writing simply mu is equal to uh, delta is equal to mu minus 1 into a this formula which is the i am writing it as equation number 6 look this equation 6 will always be applicable when the thin prism if we we are told about the thin prism if there is a normal prism the thick prism is there then then we have not to take that all right whenever there may be a thin prism we shall take whenever it will be said that the angle of the prism is very very small in that case we should take this we have to remember that so this is the formula equation number six will be exclusively used for the thin prisms I hope you understand. It's clear to you.